It is April 7th, 2023, and you're watching The Code Report. One month ago, vector database Weaviate landed $16 million in Series A funding. Last week, Pinecone DB just got a check for $28 million at a $700 million valuation. And yesterday, Chroma, an open source project with only 1.2 GitHub stars, raised $18 million for its embeddings database. And I just launched my own vector database this morning. We're currently pre-revenue, pre-vision, and pre-code, and valued at $420 million. Leave your credit card details in the comments if you'd like to invest. But you might be wondering, what the hell is a vector database? Or what the hell is a vector even? Well, that's easy. A vector is just an array of numbers. But what's cool about vectors is that they can represent more complex objects, like words, sentences, images, or audio files, in a continuous high-dimensional space called an embedding. It's kind of like this. When you go to a party, all of the jocks sit around the TV and watch football. Meanwhile, all the girls find the dance floor, while you group together with all the programming introverts to talk about vectors in the corner. Notice how all the similar objects are grouped together. Embedding work the same way, except they map the semantic meaning of words together, or similar features in virtually any other data type. These embeddings can then be used for things like recommendation systems, search engines, and even text generation like ChatGPT. But once you have your embeddings, the question becomes where do you store them and how do you query them quickly? That's where vector databases come in. In a relational database, you have rows and columns. In a document database, you have documents and collections. But in a vector database, you have arrays of numbers clustered together based on similarity, which can be queried with ultra-low latency, making it an ideal choice for AI-driven applications. Relational databases like Postgres have tools like pgVector to support this type of functionality, and Redis also has first-class vector support. But a bunch of new native vector databases are popping up, like Weaviate and Milvis are open source options written in Go. Then you have Pinecone, which is extremely popular, but is not open source. Then you have Chroma, which is based on ClickHouse under the hood, and many other options from there. Let's jump into some code to see what it looks like. Here I'm using Chroma and JavaScript, and the first thing I'll do is create the client, then define an embedding function. In this case, it will use the OpenAI API to update the embeddings whenever a new data point is added. Each data point is just a document with an ID and some text. And finally, we can query the database by passing a string of text just like an LLM. What's most interesting though, is that in the query result, we get the data back in addition to an array of distances, with a smaller number indicating a higher degree of similarity. That's pretty cool, but the real reason that these databases are so hot right now is that they can extend LLMs with long-term memory. You start with a general purpose model, like OpenAI's GPT-4, Meta's Llama, or Google's Lambda, then provide your own data in a vector database. When the user makes a prompt, you can then query relevant documents from your own database to update the context, which will customize the final response. And it could also retrieve historical data to give the AI long-term memory. In addition, they also integrate with tools like Langchain that combine multiple LLMs together. It's all pretty crazy, and I'm working on a tutorial on my second channel with Weaviate, so make sure to subscribe over there if you really want to dive into this stuff. And lastly, in related news, if you check out the top trending repos in GitHub today, they're almost all trying to create artificial general intelligence, like Microsoft's Jarvis, AutoGPT, and Baby AGI, which are tools that use vector databases and LLMs to prompt themselves. And this is terrifying as someone who just became a prompt engineer. I never thought I'd become obsolete twice in one month. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.